go. Greetings, unsettled souls. Yes! Sam, I need to get you doing political commentary for the media speaks. I want to remind you, a lot of you know that I also DJ at uh, a number of places. Uh, currently, I'm at Christie's Cabaret on um, ooh, mon uh, Sundays, Mondays, and Wednesdays. And you can catch me now at Buzzbin for a night called the Looney Bin. That is happening every Tuesday, and yours truly is picking all the good music, which is to say everything that's not modern hip-hop or pop. And if you'd like to come out, check it out. We have everything from uh, new dubstep to old goth, punk, metal, thrash, alternative, before it became a catchphrase, you name it, we play it. Also, it is uh, my birthday, so if anybody wants to come out and say what's up, I will be at George's Lounge tomorrow, uh, probably sometime around 9 o'clock. So if you would like to come out and raise a glass, I certainly would like to have you there. All right, Jonathan, Cindy, hello, Cindy. Paul, I did see this in time this time to give you a shout-out. Greetings. Paul, you had better be out at George's tomorrow for uh, my birthday. I, that would be great. He runs like 20 miles a day, even in the snow, so he'll have no problem getting there. All right, um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk a bit today about Ocasio-Cortez. She has become the uh, the Democrat darling of the left. Worshipped, praised, la, la, la. The point is, she has a number of ideas which are incredibly troublesome. First of all, now let's let's allow this to sink in for a moment. She wants to charge or tax. Well, it is a charge. She wants to tax seventy percent of the wealth produced by the wealthiest Americans. Now, let's just say here for a second that you are in favor of that. That you feel that that's that's justifiable based on the sins of the rich. Okay. If you live in a house and your landlady says that she's going to take from you 70% of your income, don't you think that there's a really good chance that you're simply going to move? Move where? I don't know. Move anywhere that doesn't charge you 70% of your income. Shazam, Sparky! Use the thinking part of your brain. All this is going to do is cause wealth to take a mass exit from the country. This is some of the same logic that led to outsourcing. Now, Trump's doing a lot to fix that by also taxing things coming back in. But the bigger point here is that that isn't going to work. Even if you think that it is somehow justified, I hate to be the one to inform you that that simply isn't going to work. That's not doable. Well, that's not her only sin here. Uh, Paul mentions offshore accounts, that too, uh, of course, because, you know, they, they've, got, they've got the funds to look into the loopholes. And then when someone uses the loophole, of course, they call them crooked, which is what Mr. Trump did. What Donald Trump said, in essence, is that there were a number of tax shelters set up for the rich, and he used them. He then pointed them out and said that some of them may not be fair, and people said that he was wrong for having used them. Now, to make that analogy, that's like saying that someone does their best not to be on welfare because they don't feel that. They, they, let's word it another way. Someone doesn't necessarily feel that the welfare system is set up the way that it should be. I'm one of those people. I think that there is a much better way to do it by eliminating a large number of the middlemen. It's a whole nother show topic. But if someone suddenly falls down the steps and breaks their leg and has to go on assistance, that does not mean that they are a hypocrite. They had to pay into the system that they may not have agreed with, and they may feel that a lot of their money has been wasted because they have done so. But that doesn't mean that they're not entitled to the help if they legitimately need it, which they had paid into. So that's important to mention, too. But with the offshore accounts, yes, they can afford to 
find the loopholes, to, to pay money experts to find the loopholes to hide this money. The other glaring problem with Ocasio-Cortez is her insane belief on the lie of global warming. Now, before you start sending me tons of things, it's not up for debate, the science is in, the science is in. No, it's not. Um, look at the inconvenient truth. Why do you think part two did so badly in the theaters? Because part one could not have been more mistaken and more wrong if it had set out with that being the sole purpose. Virtually nothing said in that movie is true. And now that a number of years have passed, we got Ocasio-Cortez here. Preying on people who voted for her and in some instances were likely too young to realize that this lie has already been packaged and sold to us once in Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth. And none of it came true, which we're going to prove in a minute. Yes, I said prove. Now, uh, this is from Fox News. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat New York, spoke on Monday about the urgency to take on climate change, comparing it to World War II. Speaking at an event commemorating Martin Luther King Day, Ocasio-Cortez expressed how the climate issue is a generational issue that younger people are more focused on. Now, let me, let, let me cue you into this here. This isn't new. I got hair in my mouth. How many of you live on air? Isn't it romantic? It's beautiful. Um, how many of you remember the Generation Next Pepsi commercial? It was, it was the same old Pepsi. Oh, but Generation Next. Why? Because they were trying to sell it to Generation Xers. And they couldn't very well sell it to them by saying, the drink of baby boomers. So they put Generation Next on the bottle to sell it to a bunch of Gen Xers like it was something brand spanking new. And, you know, off it went. Generation Next Pepsi. This is the same thing she's doing. Well, if you're young and you support me, then you're going to stand behind this because this is what the young believe. This is what other people have believed before her and were wrong. Now, she takes it to a whole nother issue. The way we're laughing at Al Gore today for having been mind-blowingly wrong is the exact way that we're going to be laughing at Ocasio-Cortez uh, within the next 12 years. Um, let me go to screen share for my friends here. Hello on um, Google Hangout, Media Speaks. Make sure you subscribe. Millennials and people, you know, Gen, Gen Z and all these kinds of folks will come after us, are looking, and we're like, here we go. The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And our biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? Twelve years. If you believe this, I have some remarkable swamp land in Alaska that I, you have to purchase. It's a gold mine. Um, she's, like, again, I compared it to World War II. And Ocasio-Cortez has forged a reputation for making bold, at times, factually incomplete statements. She recently lashed out at the fact-checkers, accusing those scrutinizing her statements of a false equivalency and bias. No, they're simply pointing out that she is unbelievably wrong. And let me get into a little bit of this to prove to you just how wrong she is. This is from Heartland.org. Um, it's a very long article, but I want to read the part that um, is prudent to this. The name of the article is Climate Hysteric Skyrocket, January 22nd, 2019. So just a couple days ago. Yes, I, I posted the date on this. It's the 25th. It's very late of the 24th. I get it. Um, they refuse to do so. In other words, the climate, the, those, who, those who say the science is on their side don't prove that it is. And that's what he's talking about. They ignore the way rising atmospheric carbon dioxide is spurring plant growth and greening the planet. Did you read that right? Oh, you didn't know that, did you? No, because 
the, the mainstream media didn't bother to let you in on these facts. Um, they blame every extreme weather event on fossil fuel emissions, but they cannot explain the medieval warm period. Yeah, do you think the knights in shining armor were, were you driving their cars around? I don't think so. Um, the Little Ice Age, which again, way before the combustion engine, or extreme weather events even, or decades or centuries ago, or why we have had fewer, now let, let this be heard, fewer extreme weather events in recent decades. You hear about the ones we have more because of the very nature of the media and the the fact that, you know, if you have an agenda, then you're going to film whatever makes you look right at the given moment. But overall, there are less extreme weather events than there have been. They simply resort to trial in the media and other forms where they can exclude expulsory evidence, bar any case of the fossil fuel, fuel defense, and prevent any cross-examination of their witnesses, assertions, and make-believe evident, evidence. Evidence. Climate models are not evidence. Now, we just talked about how wrong Al Gore was on an inconvenient truth. Well, let's, let's really look at this, shall we? At best, climate models offer scenarios of what may happen if the assumptions on which they are based turn out to be correct. And that is where the global warming crowd doesn't understand that they've lost the debate. The foundation to which they've built the house on is wrong. Therefore, the house is wrong, is a good way to put it. Their data that they base the models on is mistaken. And the way they do that is, let's say that uh, from here to here is all of recorded history. But if you cut up this little section right here and just use it, you can prove that the planet warmed without having to prove the rest of the chart, which proves that it did not. And then you can base a whole model off of that one very tiny bit of information. That's the way that works. It says the average prediction by 102 models is now a full degree, 0.55 Celsius, above what satellites are actually measuring. In other words, they've already raised it over what is proven should be the base for temperatures. Satellites are not recording the temperature findings that the models are using. But yet they're saying that's what it is, even though the satellites are saying the exact opposite. Models that cannot be confirmed by actual observation are of little value and certainly should not be a basis for vital energy policy making. The alarmist mantra seems to be if models in reality don't degree, agree, then reality must be wrong. In fact, even at atmospheric carbon dioxide levels climb to 405 parts per million, Except for short-term temperature spikes like El Nino ocean warming events, there have been very little planetary warming since the year 1998. Nothing to suggest chaos nor runaway temperatures have ever been found. Now, what did I just say about Generation Next, the whole Pepsi thing? What did I just talk about with that? I said that this has been going on. They've been trying to sell these lies and repackage them for much longer than Ocasio-Cortez is saying they did. And as I just pointed out rather clearly here, 1998. Harry was the first major category 3-5 hurricane to make U.S. landfall in record for 12 years. Claims that tornadoes have gotten worse and more frequent and intense are obliterated by evidence. NOAA records show that from 1954 to 1985, an average of 56 F3 to F5 tornadoes struck the U.S. each year. But from 1985 to 2017, there were only 34 on average. And in 2018, for the first time in modern history, not a single violent twister touched down in the USA. How many times have you heard that tornadoes have been getting worse? You have been lied to. It's from Noah. It's hardly a right-wing conspiracy. I don't want to hear it in the comment line. Droughts differ little from historic trends and cycles, and the Dust Bowl, Azani, and Mayan droughts, as long as other as well as other ancient dry spells listed in the links, 
were long and destructive. Moreover, modern agriculture and dip in irrigation technologies enable farmers to deal with droughts far better than they could have before. Forest fires are fewer than in the recent past and largely due to the failure to remove hundreds of millions of dead or diseased trees that provide deadly, massive conflagrations. In other words, it goes back to what Trump had said. He said that they had made it illegal for the clearing that needed to take place to do so. And as a result, a lot of what, hey, Joshua, what's up? A lot of what that has done is contribute to the forest fires. So they're not being caused by global warming. They're being caused by the fact that they're not removing the, the fuel, as it were, from the floor of the forest. So when someone camps there and doesn't put the fire out properly, it's usually not done on purpose. Sometimes it is. You end up with massive fires. And the next thing you know, CNN is out there telling you how the planet is warming. Arctic and Antarctic ice are largely within normal and cyclical levels for the past several centuries, and snow surface temperatures in the East Antarctic Plateau regularly reach a negative 130 degrees, that's negative 90 Celsius, or lower. Average Antarctic temperatures would have to rise some 20 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit year-round for all of its land ice to melt and cause oceans to rise faster than their 7 to 2 inch per century pace, which it has had for a very long time. In fact, the world's oceans have risen over 400 feet since the Pliscocene glaciers melted. That's how much water those mile-high Ice Age glaciers took off the oceans. Ice level rise paused during the Little Ice Age, but kicked in again the past century or so. Meanwhile, retreating glaciers reveal long-lost forest, coins, compasses, and other artifacts. Why is that important? Because it says it proves that those glaciers have come and gone many times. Not done by the combustion engine. Not done because you gave your kid a ride to school. None of that's true. Pacific islands were not covered by rising seas anytime soon, and 7 to 12 inches per century, and because corals and atolls grow as the seas rise. And friends, this goes on and on and on. The article literally is a trove for anybody that wants to know the truth. Again, it's the Heartland Institute Climate Hysterics Skyrocket. It's well worth the read. And as I as I zip out of here, I feel like I could have played the Dumdy of the Day music for uh, Ocasio-Cortez for the entire show. But no, I saved it for this. That's right, you are the idiot music. And don't forget, friends, donate to the ASPCA if you can. Uh, it's uh, the charity that I've been promoting from the donations I've been getting. If you'd like to donate to the show, friends, please do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal. And I use the money for mailing out dunce caps and uh, research time and everything the show takes to do. So, again, that's the correct views at hotmail.com. Uh, Dundee of the day here goes to Ocasio Cortez and many of the people in France who are support, supporting Macron. Now, for those of you that don't know, let me put this, uh, let me give you a little bit of background here. It does tie into what the whole show has been about. Um, a large number of people voted and supported the policies of Macron and those who have worked to tax them into oblivion in the name of global warming. Now, first of all, the lie was sold to them. And then after that, they found out they had to pay for it. They found out that it was costing them a fortune to drive anywhere, to heat their homes. Food prices were going through the roof because of how much it cost to deliver. Everything started to add up. And slowly but surely, many of the facts that I just gave you and many others prove that global warming has been nothing but a hoax this whole time. They've been revolting in the street. 
they have been, they're probably going to force at least half of what they want through. And it is a joining of the right and the left. The only way to put this into perspective here is if the Trump supporters and the Occupy movement was to march together in the streets. That's what we're seeing in France. Dumb of the day, you've got Ocasio-Cortez out there saying that we need to invest in the very same policies with the, which the rest of the world is waking up to as flawed and diminished. Belgium's waking up to this. The people of Venezuela are waking up to this. Uh, many citizens in Germany are understanding it. The leadership of Italy has uh, doing a remarkable job putting all of this into perspective. Le Pen in France, uh, Macron's adversary, if you will. Um, many people in France wish they had not voted for Macron, and Le Pen is her party is going to see substantial increases in representation in Europe. You watch. Of course, Donald Trump has done the right thing by pulling us out of the Paris Accord, which dealt with global warming. And you've got Ocasio-Cortez and those who support her trying to breathe life into the very systems which have failed in Europe. Does that sound very wise to you? No, it doesn't. Uh, thank you for listening, friends. Uh, once again, please do donate at the correct use at hotmail.com. Um, it's my birthday today, so I'll accept birthday gifts of any amount. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, good night, Todd, Benny, Josh. Thank you all for tuning in. Bill, as always. Good night, friends. God bless. And uh, friends here on Media Speaks. And my channel. That's you.